Today we're going to talk about one of the fundamentals of tuning whenever you first get started. Stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we're kind of going back to the very, very, very beginning. This is one of our fundamental videos where we talk about the root core of tuning. We're going to take a look at a couple different tunes and try and pick out what's going on and how we actually control the vehicle in the tune. So let's jump over to the whiteboard. I want to jot out a couple things, draw some stuff for you to take a look at. And if you haven't already subscribed, you're going to want to subscribe now because whether or not you've started tuning in the past, you're new to tuning, or you're continuing your tuning journey through videos, books, whatever, this is going to help you to understand what you're doing in the tune as part of the tuning process. So, everybody knows about the fact that we have our, uh, well, let me get my pen up here. We've got our triangle fuel, air, spark. Those are the three things that we need for combustion. We go to red, blah, blah, blah. there's our combustion. Fuel, air, spark are the three different things that we need on a gasoline motor, at least. And so there's something to be aware of. In most situations, whenever you are tuning, specifically like on a platform using the stock ECU, things like that, uh, the fuel portion of it, that is what we consider a constant. We do have settings that we can make that are going to adjust fuel delivery, but whenever we're tuning, we're not directly adjusting fuel delivery. I know that sounds a little bit uh, counterintuitive, as it were, but we think of fuel as a constant. Short of maybe changing injector size, something like that, we go in and we populate the injector data. All of that data in the tune is a constant. What we're actually adjusting is the, the air. And so, whenever the ECU reads air via MAF or speed density using a MAP sensor, things like that, that directly relates to how much uh, fuel is being delivered. So, we're not tuning fuel. We're tuning air. So, whenever the engine reads more air, the ECU delivers more fuel. Less air, less fuel. And then spark, which we're not going to really touch on today. Obviously, we directly affect spark. We'll talk more about that in later series on the fundamental side. But for now, let's jump into a tune and take a look at it and figure out how we effectively change the parameters in order to deliver more fuel. Okay, so we're going to be looking at vehicles that are all kind of around the early 10 teens, like 2012, 14, 15, stuff like that. And I believe this is a 2012 Silverado. And whenever we start off, looking at the tune we're going to be looking at the engine parameters first that's where all the bread and butter stuff is that we need now uh, if you're not seeing the same screen that i'm seeing make sure that you go under editor and view and that you're in advanced view if you're in basic view you might be missing some of this data as an example way less data available to us so we want to make sure that we're in advanced view You'll get a pop-up that says, hey, you need to close this and open the window back up. No biggie. So open this back up. We're taking a look at what we've got going on. Well, right away underneath our airflow tab, remember we talked about airflow being the thing that is that we're tuning for, not fuel. You know, if we have to update the fuel flow, things like that, we're doing that. But this part is is a constant in our math, our airflow that we're looking at. We're looking for a couple key indicators, specifically MAP and MAF calibration. Now, don't get caught up by MAP right here because this is on this platform, this is not actually where we're going to tune it. It might be under dynamic, but once again, we're not going to tune it here. That's why we have to go up and we actually have a virtual volumetric efficiency. And long story short, on some other videos I talk about it, this is all based on coefficient math. Go uh, search for my VVE math stuff where I talk more about what all these coefficients work and how they work to generate a speed density table as we're used to seeing it. 
So we're not diving that deep into it, but for right now, we want to look at the fact that we do have a map and a map. Some other brands, say Ford, might have a map or a MAF. Usually not going to be operating off of both. There might be other things going on that goes deeper, but we have to figure out directly what is our base airflow calculation. Well, in this case, we have a dynamic airflow. GMs, their final uh, fuel calculation, our air calculation is dynamic airflow, and it's going to switch between, uh, as you read below here, a uh, filtered MAF, and speed density and that's kind of the kickover point right there so that gives us an idea of what we need to look at uh, so in this case we have our filtered math here and then we have our VE or speed density table now there's other things that can actually have influence on that and we keep on going down through the airflow table and we will see the different things dynamic airflow manifold volume in this case big one because that's part of the VE calculation. Electronic throttle, uh, it can on some certain platforms. There might be throttle body size, stuff like that. But we also have desired throttle area. This is going to be your pedal feel. As you can see, pedal position versus your actual desired throttle area. Things like that. Variable camshaft. Now, this is one of the big ones. If a platform has variable camshaft, the way it handles the tuning of it is a lot more complicated. In this case, it's not that hard, uh, specifically because it's a pushrod motor with single cam, and we've, we're only going to have one table that actually has uh, camshaft values in it. This We're going off the intake lobe versus the exhaust lobe. And then if it had a supercharger, there's none fitted on there. But let's take a look at something different and see how it handles it. Okay, now we're looking at a 2015 Mustang 5 liter uh, Coyote, and we're kind of looking for the same stuff that we are looking at on the Chevy platform. Right away, map sensor not fitted. Doesn't have a map sensor as part of its uh, calculation stuff. So speed density, this isn't really going to be in play. Now, ones that do use speed density, yeah, you're going to have to dive through and figure all this stuff out. But since it doesn't have one, we know that we're going to have a map on there. And so we're going to be looking at our math curve, and uh, that's going to be how we're controlling our fuel. Once again, if we go over, take a look at our fuel, it's going to be our constant. There's our constant, 1408, our injector rates. Those are all constants. We're using airflow to determine how much fuel is going out Uh but we can scroll through here and look at some of the other stuff that's going on and kind of all the different stuff that can play into the airflow calculations. These are what we would call modifiers out there. So IMRC is a big one. If you have IMRC, it's, it's creating two different states. Uh, you know, so we go into a speed density calculator. We're going to have different points. All these different points are going to tie into uh, different th states on the IMRC and different states for the cam. This is going to be a dual overhead cam. And so we're going to have a lot more uh, cam positions and stuff like that than we'd have on a single overhead cam. And so because of that, we're seeing all these things line up that go back that can be modifiers on top of our base airflow. And we have to figure out how these things work that's whenever we have to dive into uh specific platform tuning to figure out what's going on how we can uh work with them and what's going to be required as part of the tuning steps but a big takeaway from this is we're still tuning airflow to get our fuel output and last but not least let's look at a 2014 challenger once again, wonder airflow. Uh, oops. Last but not least, let's look at a 2014 Challenger. We're under airflow, and you can see we've got a map sensor enabled. We've got map calibration. Uh, should have a curve, just like everything else. May not have the resolution there. This thing's going to lean a little, lean a little bit heavier on map. But as we work down through these, we'll see. Hey. Uh, we've got VE tables here, volumetric efficiency, that's great, those are ugly. Uh, electronic throttle, same things that we've talked about on the GM. Charge motion device, this is going to be like the IMRC that we saw in the Mustang. See these overlaps in there. 
variable camshaft. Uh, we do have variable camshaft enabled, but this is going to be more like the GM than the Mustang. Where, but you can see that we have an exhaust cam phaser enabled instead of an intake, so we're going off of our exhaust cam angle. See how it's different? Pressure control, if it were boosted, that would be a thing. Same thing with supercharger, but we've got something different on here. We've got neural networking. And so neural networking is going to be how this thing figures out its final airflow calculation that goes in and then creates how much fuel is being delivered. Now, these things do have an option of turning off neural networking. Once again, this is whenever you get down into why you need to look at specific things for specific platforms. But you see the overarching theme of all of this is, is that we're tuning airflow. And these are some of the things that you're going to be looking for whenever you open up a tune file for a new vehicle. Hopefully, this helps you guys to kind of understand that at the core, all of these are exactly the same, but the way that they approach it is completely different. We have three different ways of doing the same thing in this, uh, these examples, and they're based on the different manufacturers. One manufacturer is pretty straightforward. Another one's pretty straightforward also, but different. And then the third one is uh, completely different. But at the end of the day, we're doing the same thing. We're generating a calibrated air reading and using that to deliver the amount of fuel so this is fundamentals we're keeping it simple right now i don't want to get too far off into the weeds on this stuff as we go through more fundamentals we're going to talk about specific topics a lot more in depth uh, looking directly at different styles of ecus uh, different styles of fueling adjustment spark adjustment airflow adjustment things like that so if you haven't already drop a subscribe hit likes, drop any questions or comments you have down there. And as always, thanks for stopping by the garage. Remember, ABT, always be tuning.